A multi-band vertical antenna requiring no mast. I'm gonna show you how it's done right now on Ham Radio Dude. This is my intro. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Ham Radio Dude, and thanks for checking out the channel. Let's go straight to the bench where I'm gonna draw out for you my idea for a multi-band vertical antenna requiring absolutely no mast. I think it's a good idea. Let me know what you think in the comments below after you watch this video. Oh, uh, yeah, let me just get rid of that shop.hamradiodude.com that was there. And here we are. So let's just say we can find somewhere with a tree. Okay, pretty simple. And what we're going to do is we're going to utilize that tree. But in order to have a no mass commander, we're going to have the 10 spike I talked about uh, in the beginning of the summer. The 10 spike is going to go into that hamstick commander that I basically designed a plate for. And I'll show that to you all in just a second. And then we're going to have three wires going into the tree, either straight up or at slight angles. Now, the thing about this is, is, well, how do you keep these wires from moving around and swaying around? The joy of it all is, is attached to the wires is going to be 550 cord, and it's going to go back down into that base plate. Let me show you why I say that or what I mean. Essentially, we're going to have our antenna here, here, and here. Three antenna wires should give us four bands, like, for example, 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters. The wire is going to go into the tree. And then with 550 cord attached to it, it's going to come back down and we can tie it into any of these holes right here. So let's build this real quick. This is what it's going to look like roughly when it's done. Now, I do want to go part by part, take it all apart, rebuild it so you can kind of get an idea. But one thing I want to mention is you don't need these three ace 24 connectors like this. All you need really is a bolt and a nut. And I'll show you all that right now. So let me disassemble this. Ooh, that's so tight, I won't be able to disassemble that, but eh, we'll get the point. So again, we have our 3 a 24 bolts, which can go onto a 3 a 24 nut, and we're gonna have three of them. And maybe you could even try a fourth band, I, I just haven't yet. But anyway, we have it just like that. We do have to have this 3 a 24 connector in this side, and I'll show you why. What we're gonna do is you're gonna get a truck mount, and these truck mounts are available at HamFest for I think you can get them for 10 bucks with a connector. Um, but I do caution you on those connectors because again, they're not the best quality. Um, what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna take that connector, okay? And I'm gonna make a ring connector with a power pole adapter on it. Now I should heat shrink this, I will later. I'm gonna put it down so it's touching the outer portion of the SO239 connector. This is grounding it out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and place this little spacer on here. So once it tightens up, this isn't gonna move. It'll still be grounded out and we can put our counterpoise wires here. We're gonna go ahead now on the bottom and we're gonna place this through the truck mount. And it should fit relatively safely. There we go, or snugly rather. There we go. Now we're gonna use that uh, three ace 24 that I was talking about. And I have a lock washer on there and there's the bolt. And we're gonna screw this on. Boom, good to go. You could use a, you could use some kind of wrench or whatever you need to to tighten all this up, or channel locks, for example, even. But I'm not going to do that right now. And that gives some spacing right here as well. But now, uh, take your tent spike, which you can get at Walmart for about 98 cents, a dollar 20 on a bad day, I guess. And you put it through here, and you're going to tighten down the four bolts that are here. Okay. So now we're kind of left with, and I'm going to take that out just for this example here. But now we're kind of left with something like this, right? All you got to do now is measure the correct lengths of wire for A, your radials, which I have five radials on here. I bundled them together and I used a counterfeit Anderson power pole adapter. And the reason I did that is when you put a real Anderson power pole adapter on with a counterfeit, they disconnect really easy. And you want that because if anybody's running through a field and they hit on it, trip, there you go. No problem. Nothing got damaged, right? So anyway, you got your five. I have five wires here at 25 feet each. If I need to, I could always add on to them. I could even add just another uh, little pigtail here. So there you go. Now with the actual wires for the antenna links, I'm gonna continue using the DX Commander's recommended links for the DX Commander Expedition for 40 meters, 20 meters, and 10 meters. Right now I'm only gonna show you 10, but all I gotta do here is first I'll make a 
a ring connector. So I'm going to use my Harbor Freight uh, wire strippers. Everybody needs good strippers. These are nice. Boom. And then I have to decide, you know, how I want to do this. So uh, that's going to be too small. But if I had a different size bolt and I went straight to a bolt and a nut, these would work just fine. Since I don't at the moment, though, I'm going to place this on here. I'm going to crimp it. And then I'm going to place it right on top of here. Screw it on with a bolt. And that leaves only one thing left. How do you connect this wire right here to a 550 cord? And there's a couple things. You could just make a nylon spacer that has, you know, uh, an inch with two holes on it. One ties to 550 cord, one ties to uh, the actual antenna wire. Or you could find something to print up that looks like this. And this basically would allow you to put 550 cord in, tie it off, uh, and then your antenna wire. Hey, you could even use pulleys on a tree if you wanted to, but... The whole theory on this is that if you have this wire in a tree and it's just kind of dangling from the plate that we talked about, it could blow around and it might not be super tight. But if you have 550 cord that comes back down into one of these holes, you can tighten it as you need. Or you could loosen it up as you need and then kind of bring it down to make fine adjustments as you need. So it becomes kind of convenient, right? Real quick, I just wanted to mention that it's important to keep those three wires or four wires tight because if you don't keep them tight, it's going to throw off your values. For example, your standing wave ratio may be getting larger or smaller depending on how close or far apart the wires get. Far apart the wires get. Uh, same thing, your impedance might get thrown off. A lot of things might happen. So that's why it's really nice to have that 550 core to be able to tighten it or loosen it when you need. And again, in order to maybe tighten it if it ever gets stretched out or, or the wire becomes a little bit loose. Anyway, the concept of the no mast commander, or if you want to call it that, uh, we're going to test this here in a very near episode. But I do also want to mention one more thing. If by chance that tent spike isn't large enough, they do make larger tent spikes that you can get at places like Home Depot or railroad spikes as well. Anyway, that is the uh, no mast commander. You get the idea and the concept? Let me know in the comments below what you think. This was just a demonstration of what's going to be possible. Now, this started off as a hamstick commander that was used for your patio or your apartment. And as you can see the progression, it's now turned into a Nomast commander. I say that with respect, commander as well, uh, because Kellum's doing a great job over there, and I do reference him a lot. So we're going to, in the next episode, fully build this thing slowly in case you have any questions, and then we're going to go test it. But... Yeah, this is a really cool thing. A no-mask commander seems to be working pretty well as of now. Watch the channel to see more. Thanks a lot. I'm Ham Radio Dude. Goodbye.